Thank you very much, Carolyn, and good morning to everybody. Thank you for attending police headquarters today. We've had a very busy uh, start to the uh, week. Uh, a very safe, a very effectively run long weekend by our police officers across the city and by the folks who organized the many events that many members of our public attended. Unfortunately, this morning at 3.15, we had a quintuple shooting involving a double homicide. Three other victims shot by firearms in the area. As you know, the Music Nightclub is located at uh, 15 Saskatchewan Drive. There are pay duty police officers were assigned to the venue on the, out, on the exterior of the venue. During the course of the evening, the event was running smoothly. Officers on the outside started to do an assessment of the crowd. And they realized there were a larger number of people hanging around the venue on the exterior based on some of the VIPs who were inside. We actually made a call for additional police resources to be sent down to the area to assist with the crowd management. At this point, we had no direct information or intelligence that there would be a firearm event happening later on. When the shooting took place at approximately 3.15 inside the venue, the initial shooting, we had a large visible police presence on the outside. Despite the large presence, armed offenders took out firearms and started a shooting inside the venue. This is an entertainment venue packed with hundreds of innocent people. The shooting spilled out from the venue and went both north and south of that venue. We found additional victims, including one female who was pronounced later on at the hospital. I want to acknowledge the outstanding work of our frontline officers who were at this venue. They were dedicated and diligent throughout the evening. They continually made assessments of the security and the threat levels. They proactively moved additional resources. And in the immediate aftermath of the several shooting locations that we had, they continued to move towards the most dangerous offenders in the area and provided direct assistance to the victims that they found, including one officer who performed CPR on the female now deceased. I want to acknowledge the loss of life. The two persons who lost their lives in the last few hours and their families, the communities where they come from, and the other victims who are still hopefully going to be coming through this. This has been a very difficult evening. Um, and otherwise Mars a very peaceful weekend, a very effective weekend in terms of this city showing itself off around this country and around the world. We have had a spike in shootings this year in 2015. To be clear, this has been on par with 2012 in terms of the total number of shooting events. In fact, this weekend's uh, total shooting events makes us equal with 2012. It seems that we have a cycle going on in the city. Every four years, we have a spike in shootings. We're doing the analysis to find out what's, to, what's, what's contributing to these cycles. And we're also doing everything we can to protect our communities and put our officers in the right place at the right time to do the right things. We currently have a major operation going in the northwest corner of the city. It's called Project Line. We've assigned some of our best investigators and many centers right across North America. Every police chief in every one of those jurisdictions like us are doing everything they can to suppress and prevent violence. And so we're looking to turn around this spike. Unfortunately, this last uh, few hours have reminded us that despite our best efforts, there's still a lot of work to do. We rely so much on our communities to assist us with this, and you, the media, to get the, the information out. There are people who are at that venue tonight, at the music club, who have information that could help to solve this crime, who have information that could help to, to allow our homicide team to identify and arrest the perpetrators of these crimes. There are people there who may be victimized and may need medical treatment or other supports. And so we're asking for the public through the media to come forward with whatever information you have so that we can wrap up this investigation as quickly as possible and support the victims involved. I know that there'll be an event right after this where we talk about the new Toronto Police Service mobile application. That application could actually be used in this case and the other firearms cases that we're investigating over the course of this year. And so I encourage the public, whether through your usual means of calling in to Crime Stoppers or calling directly to the Toronto Police Service, or as you're about to hear, utilizing the Toronto Police mobile app, this is an opportunity for you to help us to solve these crimes and prevent future crimes. Again, I want to note the outstanding work of the police officers from 14 Division and officers right across the city at the venue at the Music Club during this quintuple shooting. I want to thank those who are of the community who have already come forward at the scene and have come forward since to our investigators to assist in the, process, in the investigation of this matter and encourage people to continue to do so. 
I'd be happy to take any questions you have specifically to the shooting event that took place this morning, and then we'll turn it over for the next segment on the Toronto Police mobile app. Do you have the firearm being, being discharged? Victims, can you address um, how those that are still in hospital are doing at this time? I believe two of them have serious injuries. Uh, we're not, no indication at this time that they're life-threatening, and one is a less serious injury, if you can call a firearm. Growing? What I can tell you is that there was at least one victim inside the club itself. There may have been other, other victims, but we're not clear at this time in the club. What we do know for sure, we found another shooting victim south of the location and another shooting victim north of that location. Um, and so it obviously moved out. There are other scenes that indicate weapons being fired at other locations as well. So we haven't been able to piece it all together. It's large and complex. Talk about the fact that the call was made to bring in additional resources, and despite your best efforts, this happened anyway. I'm wondering if you can address the nature of these crimes, given that I imagine the officers weren't invisible. Well, obviously we have a brazen set of individuals who are armed and willing to use those firearms in crowded places and put innocent lives at, at risk. They said our officers are extremely brave. The intelligence that we're able to develop about these events and the nature of the crimes that we're facing right across the city allows us to put our people where we can best prevent and suppress the crimes. But even with our best efforts, it requires a greater effort. What about private security? Was there security on behalf of music, and did they have enough? Uh, there was private security present. They were very forthcoming in the information that they had. They've assisted and continue to assist with the investigation. We have an ongoing relationship with the organization and management of Music Club for these events. Uh, and so all of that was in place. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to prevent this crime from happening. Gun got into this nightclub. Um, were, was the paid duty officers, were they responsible for these security checks? Was it private security that were doing security pat-downs um, for people on the way in? Were there any metal detectors at this venue? Um, I won't speak to the specifics of all the security at the venue. Our standard operating procedure is the venue security do all the direct pat-down, wanding if there is, and our police officers provide a visible presence and deal with all other matters around the venue. You must be a bit shocked or disappointed that the um, that wanding did not work. Wanding is intended to, to find, I, I would imagine, something like a gun. In this case, we can't determine whether or not the firearm came through the, the main entrance or the firearm was, was, was produced in, through, through another venue. It is a large venue, and if you know the music nightclub, there's not just a building, there's the shootings at the OVO Festival. The after party at the music nightclub, there was a shooting that took place in the intersection immediately outside of Music Night Club last year. One of the reasons why we had an ongoing security operation with the management to do everything we could to make sure that the venue in this room. At this point, we don't know for sure. I can tell you that there is at least one completely innocent bystander in this. And, and we're very lucky that it wasn't more given how crowded the venue was, how many firearms, sorry, how many, how many casings that we found, uh, and the number of shots fired. I'll take a couple more questions. Is that the female victim? victim? I can't confirm that at this point. Are they from Toronto? I cannot confirm that either, unfortunately. Do you, you have video? speak to the pursuit, like there was a pursuit, some bad uh, witnesses said that they, they found, they could see from their from their balconies or from their veranda, that there were public police uh, pursuing individuals. Are you saying that... This was an unfolding was... live fire situation. Our officers were present when the initial shots went off. They were within meters of the initial shooting. They continued to follow up as more firearms were discharged in the immediate aftermath of the initial shooting. Literally, our officers were running towards live fire incidents. The officer who found the female now deceased was seconds behind when she was shot and was able to, in her last breaths, provide CPR and do all he could to keep her alive. So the officer could have been injured as well? Everybody could have been injured. Residents could have been injured. Participants in the club, people jogging or walking through the area. This was a brazen, large-scale, ongoing firearm incident where our officers, members of the public, were directly in the line of fire. We were very lucky that this was not a larger body count, quite frankly. Can you talk about multiple shell casings? Can you give us an idea of how many shots were fired? I can't tell you at this point. Is it fair to say that Toronto police also fired their weapons? No. There were no discharge of firearms from our police officers. Can you just clarify, um, you, you said that there was going to be an increased presence of um, paid duty officers and, and then more came. How many, can you give us a ballpark of how many? I can't tell were? you the exact number. We did, we did do an assessment of the crowd. We felt it was dynamic enough. People were looking to get into the venue because of the popularity of the event. 
As a result of that, officers on the scene contacted the Toronto Police Operations Centre. You're going to hear from the unit commander in a few minutes, Hugh Ferguson. We deployed extra uniform resources down into the area in an attempt, again, to maintain crowd control. We had no intelligence at that point that we're going to be dealing with a firearm incident. Were there Toronto police officers inside the club or just outside? I can't speak to that at this point. How many suspects have been set? I will just speak to that. I understand a homicide is, is, is on scene right now. They're speaking with a number of the, inve of, of the investigators initially from 14 Division. Uh, it's also my understanding that there may be a media conference specific to this incident held by homicide. And so we're just going to allow the rest of the questions you have on that to, to, to carry on. I do again want to remind 